So this time we shall be marching uh, to your headquarters, Mr. IGP, on Monday. So the ultimatum is between now and Sunday at midnight to make sure that police comes out and apologizes to the journalists and even to the media fraternity in the whole country for the atrocities that uh, your men inflicted on our friends, our comrades in the media industry. As uh, a group of doctors were walking out, they were stopped by police and uh, the person who commanded, because actually even the DPC was around, RPC was around. So the person who commanded, uh, yeah, ASP Kamuria, read it and everything to the people who were protesting and later told uh, Ogwal to spray. You spray them as if he was spraying cockroaches. So after that happened, these guys, uh, a few of, uh, three of them were arrested. So we were walking back uh, to the patrol where they were taking them. As we walked back from nowhere, Ogwal started spraying uh, Timothy and then later looked for his son of Francis. Personally, I was in a distance, so I asked him why he was spraying uh, uh, our colleagues. He started charging at me. I was lucky and I started running. Uh, I didn't run because I was a coward, no. He didn't spray Timbo because Timbo is a coward, no. He came from behind. And this is what I kept telling them. We don't fear you, but we respect you. Dear police officers, we just respect you. We don't fear you. But what you're doing is disrespecting us, but you fear us. Because if you don't fear us, there's no way you can spray a person who's just holding a camera you have a gun, you have pepper spray, you have tear gas canisters, and then you spray a person who has only a camera that doesn't even kill. So you cowards doing childish things. Please respect the media. You have your bosses, just like we have ours. If I've done something wrong and you feel like you, you, you can't cope up with it, there is court. Like you normally know, tell us, we will beat you and then you take us to court. Fine, we are going to court. But is this something that we should always be doing? Personally, I don't support the court idea, but because the group has suggested that we go to court, I will follow the group. Why don't I support the court idea? We had someone who was crippled, Andrew Ruanga. He was in a wheelchair, and the magistrate just kept on looking at him. The man couldn't even sit in court, but the, the case was dragged for two years, two good years. That's why I don't support this idea of going to court. We are saying this time, we shall start profiling. And uh, through this, we shall make sure that we have stories aired on each and every TV station, aired on all radio stations, and also in papers, profiling those individual police officers who are harassing journalists in this country. So your family, even the community where you live, will know that this Afande Ogwal and the Commander Kamulia are the ones behind harassing girls in this country. So we shall make sure we profile all these individual police officers. I think it will be a lesson to even other police officers to start behaving and respecting the role of journalism in this country. We are going to be pushed 
to also start taking the law in our hands. You beat me, I beat you. There and then we sort ourselves, like recently the president said, if someone is following you, stop and you sort yourselves. So it's the next thing that you are calling us to do. We respect you, but we don't fear you. That's the message I want you to get. I'll go with the colleagues to court because democracy has ruled. We need to work with the editors who are the gatekeepers in the various media entities that we work with uh, in order to have a very successful campaign. So in this regard, uh, the owners have committed to support us in this campaign all through one, by writing to the Minister of Internal Affairs, expressing their dissatisfaction over what happened to journalists, writing to Parliament of Uganda to discuss this matter as a very important national matter where uh, security forces are attacking journalists left, right and centre at will, but they're also um, engaging the Ministry of um, Internal Affairs under which the police falls. And these are th three very critical uh, engagements that they are going to make all for and on our behalf. But also, the editors have committed uh, to implement the decisions that we take as uh, the actors gathered here now in the interest of safeguarding our colleagues in the line of duty because it has become so rampant uh, for them to descend on innocent journalists without giving them a warning and uh, meting out violence on them. Many times they think journalists will speak and ends at that. That's why we found it extremely necessary to engage the owners and engage uh, the editors as well, the gatekeepers, uh, who sift through what goes in and out. So in this regard, we are not here alone. We are with uh, a critical mass that is going to push through this campaign that we are about to unveil to you as a collective. And it's very important that us as HRNJ, um, we are a media rights organization, certainly, we have already our lawyers deployed to help in pursuit of uh, justice for the victim journalists. Uh, also uh, giving medical treatment because their eyes were affected. We have that as uh, part of the intervention. And um, also continuing to rally colleagues uh, in the media sector to speak the same voice, but also influence the wider civil society to add on their voices to ours. Uh, that's what we are doing and working on as uh, the Human Rights Network for Genesis Uganda. But it's very important that we move as a collective. For any actions that we agree upon here, you're not going to see a single organization going it. You're going to see all of us going together. And it's going to be a common front for all of us. Chair Wilson Owere. I'm the Chairman General of National Organization of Trade Unions. It's very, very sad that the government of Uganda, instead of working with the police and the force estate, that is the journalist, to put this country to sanity, they are treating, the police is treating the journalists as if they are enemies. But I saw in the social media, what I saw there was so disturbing. And I want to warn police. Police, especially the Inspector General of Police, let him know that some of the police officers I may think they may be fighting the government within. Because the level of officer, a senior officer of Oguan, trying to spray somebody who was actually doing his work, is not acceptable. And uh, for me, I demand that this gentleman be reprimanded. He must be arrested and charged. Because what was happening yesterday was a procession of the doctors. In normally such circumstances, I, I expected the people who are supposed to dialogue with the doctors should have done that instead of allowing them to come out. Once dialogue fails and you allow these workers to come out and demonstrate, the journalists are supposed to report. In the way they are doing their duty, then you stop them. And you stop them in a crude way. I saw somebody putting, they call it what? 
pepper spray in the eyes of a journalist who was handling a camera. Now the person is taking photos. Now you come and put camulari pepper spray in the eyes. That is criminal. There are so many ways you can, if you, are, you don't want journalists to cover your demonstration, then do it in another way. So from here, I want to show solidarity with the journalist and I want to tell you that the workers of this country are with you because you are all what? Workers. And we must stop this abuse of workers all the time. Time has come when we workers must unite against anybody who oppresses oh, the workers. The journalists, you have suffered, you have done all your work properly, but some people are trying now to use their offices to undermine you, to beat you, and do all sorts of things. We have not been coming out, but time has come when you journalists must, we must work together. You know you are workers, and you are very important workers in this country. So we must unite. And my warning to the police, the Inspector General, you started very well, but the police are undermining your authority. Because I don't expect a police officer to start harassing somebody who is doing his work. And that is totally wrong. I condemn it and I call upon the workers to support and have solidarity with the journalist. Anything you want to do on Monday, if the police does not apologize, we are going to join you. Because we don't want this nonsense of people thinking that if you have authority, you misuse the authority to oppress others. We have a president of this country has all the powers, but he has always told these people to behave. Why should you use power? You are power. You have a canister. You have what? You, you shoot at people. So this is wrong. It's not acceptable. And I call upon the police administration to immediately call you, call the journalists for a dialogue. And we are going to monitor. If they don't, we are going to join the journalists. And they should not blame us. The videos are there because they normally drag the cases because, uh, uh, saying that we are investigating. So what is going to be there to be investigated? The people we are beaten around. So we want this case had as fast as the, uh, the, the, the paper spray that he sprayed. You spray someone, someone cries and you keep spraying? Really? Ogwa? When he was asked to apologize, the only thing would, uh, he said, uh, we are all humans. Yes, we are all Ugandans. Yes, we are Ugandans. So why are you killing a Ugandan? So dear police, we respect you, but we don't fear you. On Monday, we are coming on Monday. We are coming. The, any for any format that will come in, just welcome us. But we are coming. You still have a very long way. I, I mean, you still have so many days to apologize and take actions. I was part of the group that participated in the football match. Personally, I don't regret why we wanted to show them that. We can exhaust all the alternatives that they have if we are to have peace. If we are to have peace, we will use all the alternatives, all the solutions that are put, all the measures that are put. That's one of the reasons as to why I participated in that, uh, uh, that football match. But looks like these people don't change. You came, you came to enforce the law, and then you end up breaking the law. So, Mr. Lawbreaker, on Monday, please prepare. 
I don't know if they are going to give you, the, the, there is uh, a big canister that they normally put on the back. Please let them give you that. But there is a chance for you to apologize and then also punish. These people need to be punished. But we'll take the apology as, the, as they also prepare the punishment. We respect you, but we don't fear you. I think I'll call upon uh, the security leadership or the police leadership to do the needful on these officers, especially the commander who was commanding Afandi Kamuria, just because uh, the cameras concentrated so much on the guy who did the act, but he was following a command from his commander or from his boss. So I request the police leadership, I'm sure you're getting the information, that something should be done. Something that is seen should be done to these guys. That is Afande Kamuria who was commanding and a colleague who came and pepper sprayed the journalists. I wasn't alone. There were also some colleagues of mine, one of whom I work with, the son of Francis. He was also pepper sprayed. Of course, we had to go to hospital. And uh, the doctors are uh, suggested that we should take some time. They also gave us some medicine that we are applying on our faces and the eyes uh, so that at least we can have a more of a clear vision that we had before. Uh, this time around, leave alone the past, we've been hearing police coming up, making statements. Then at the end of the day, they invite journalists to go for a football match. Police leadership, we are requesting this time around, we don't want a football match to smear, to show, to do PR for what you're doing to the journalists. We pray that at least you respect our job, you respect the job that the journalists are doing. I don't know if tomorrow you call us to cover your press conferences, how are we going to cover your press conferences? When my eyes are not seeing, when I can't talk because you pepper sprayed me. When I, con when I cannot write because my hand was injured. How will I tell your story? This information is going out to police. Every Monday, you call us to your press conferences. You call us to address us. Are you going to address a blind journalist? Are you going to address a journalist who cannot write? Are you going to address a journalist who cannot speak? I think this time around, we need to see action. We need to see serious action. Afande Kamuria and his colleague, Afande Kamuria is the one who commanded and his colleague should account for their deeds. I'd like to make a passionate appeal to the government of Uganda to recognize the role of the media to recognize that without the media we cannot go that far and if we keep on intimidating the press from any other corner it would mean that eventually the profession called media or journalism in this country will die so if the journalism profession dies in this country it means a blackout it means no development will take place. We shall live in fear and definitely development in this country will be affected. I'd also want to end by saying that the safety of journalists, the safety and security of journalists in this country is the safety and security of the government, but it is also the safety and security of Uganda as a whole. We need to appreciate each other. We are a fourth estate and we need to complement whatever we are doing. So as I end my uh, interaction this morning, I would like to appreciate you, all of you who have come here, but also to remind the government of Uganda that without the press, 
we will not go very far. But I also know that the media in Uganda is controlled, at least 70% media in Uganda is owned by politicians apparently leaning to the current regime. So maybe we may be trying to, 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 to organize a blackout or a media blackout and some media houses will not go along with us. But I want to appeal to the individual journalists out there that this small action that we take today will become an amalgamation of what we would want to do for this country. So thank you very much for coming and let's try to keep on this message on the social media because I mean we need to do it. Thank you.